Welcome to Museum Monday at John James Audubon State Park in Henderson, Kentucky. My name is Heidi Taylor Caudle, and I am the museum curator here at the park. This week, we are trying something new. Today, I'll be focusing on one work of art in our museum collection, a small study of a ruby-throated hummingbird created by John James Audubon in 1821. We'll learn about what was happening in Audubon's life when he completed this drawing, why he made studies like this one, and how the drawing came to be in our museum collection. Later this week, our art educator, Mrs. Kim, will be sharing a lesson on how to draw a hummingbird like this one. You'll be able to find that lesson on the John James Audubon State Park Facebook page starting on Friday, May the 8th. So before we talk about this beautiful little uh, drawing of a hummingbird, I want to tell you a few things about what was going on in John James Audubon's life at the time when he was uh, working on it. Two years before, in 1819, the United States experienced its first financial crisis, uh, which is commonly called the Panic of 1819. It was followed by a general collapse of the American economy that lasted through 1821. Audubon was one of many, many people who were overextended financially at this time. He struggled to keep his business in Henderson, Kentucky afloat. As the Depression deepened and banks folded, Audubon went bankrupt. Audubon and his wife Lucy lost everything, including the family's business and properties, their home, all of their possessions, and their two daughters, who both died from illness as uh, young children. Lucy's family turned against Audubon, blaming his obsession with birds for his bankruptcy. Lucy was tired of hearing the insults and longed for Audubon to succeed and dispel their harsh words of him. Audubon wanted nothing more than to put his life back together and to be able to enjoy the love and respect of his family. So in 1820, with the agreement of Lucy, Audubon made the choice to leave his wife and two young sons in Cincinnati and follow the birds south to Louisiana. There he would study them, paint their images, publish the drawings, and become prosperous again so that his family could live uh, again in harmony and security. Audubon and an assistant, Joseph Mason, worked their way south on a flatboat from Cincinnati to New Orleans. For Audubon, painting birds was no longer just a hobby. It was deadly serious. This study of a single male ruby-throated hummingbird is the best and only example of Audubon's original work from this time period in our collection. He painted it within a few months of his arrival in Louisiana. Using watercolor, pastel, ink, graphite pencil, and a magnifying glass, Audubon captured minute details, nearly bringing it to life. The unfinished drawing shows the hummingbird with a small penciled-in branch on which it sits. So what was the purpose of drawing a study of a hummingbird like this? Audubon tells us in his essay, Method of Drawing Birds, uh, first published in the Edinburgh Journal of Science in 1829, that he made drawings of birds uh, that he would later set aside to use in the future. He writes, The knowledge I had already acquired of the habits of most of them enabled me to arrange my individuals in rough outlines, finishing probably at the time only one of the number intended to complete it, and putting the drawing uh, thus begun aside, sometimes for months and sometimes for years. Audubon probably used this hummingbird study in creating the illustration for the Robert Havel Jr. engraving of uh, the ruby-throated hummingbird for the Birds of America in 1828. It provided a reference for him in remembering what this type of hummingbird uh, looked like. We consider this study to be the jewel of our museum collection. It came to us in 1938 from Mrs. Leonard Sanford Tyler, the wife of one of John James Audubon's descendants. Our records show that upon Audubon's death in 1851, the drawing became the property of his wife, Lucy. After her death in 1874, it passed down to Georgiana Audubon, uh, the widow of Audubon's son, Victor Gifford. The drawing later passed to her daughter, Delia Tyler, who was the mother of Leonard Sanford Tyler. 
In 2012, Joanne Williams adopted the drawing uh, for uh, conservation and generously funding some much needed work uh, to prevent further deterioration. It's now on display in our museum as an example of John James Audubon's determination to succeed in producing lifelike and accurate bird uh, portraits. So uh, thanks for listening. Check back next week for another Museum Monday video. Also be on the lookout for uh, Mrs. Kim's Hummingbird Art Project this Friday on the John James Audubon State Park Facebook page. Stay safe and be well.